The case that Sheila spoke about, we're going to do a follow-up uh, case review um, with Dr. Humberto Liriano. He's a, a pediatric critical care specialist with Florida Hospital for Children, and he's going to give us an update on the case that you saw from last year. Dr. Liriano? Well, I'm very excited to be here today, so I want to thank Steve and Shelley for inviting me again for the third year summit and for the foundation. Um, it's been great to actually continue to follow these cases and be involved with the summit, um, and it's only appropriate that I'm actually following Sheila Black. Well, I don't know where she went, but because um, without her, we wouldn't be here today as well, so it's very excited. Um, but just to the case, so we all know, last year we presented Sebastian De Leon, um, who is now actually 18 years old. Um, so he has celebrated two birthdays now since then, um, and he got diagnosed with primary amoeba meningitis. Um, so um, last year he came, um, like Sheila Black said, came in the August to our ER, um, and Ms. Black, um, you know, started the call rolling for everybody, called the ER, and as soon as I got the first call I knew right away. Um, this was part of my fifth case, um, unfortunately, with Pam. Um, but I knew right away, you have no time to even think um, or even take a breath once you hear about a kid having um, an amoeba in the CSF. So last year, he actually uh, called in to the summit last year and it was very nice to hear his voice for the first time. Um, um, so it's still to me unreal. It's been a year, um, but it's still every day, every time I hear or see him, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so really brief, he's now 18. Um, just like most cases, they present with progressive headache. He presented for two days, um, throbbing, constant um, to tap in the back of the head, and he had subjective fever times one day. And granted, he's a teenager. So now you have the family and the parents asking, you know, you know have you have a fever? You know, you have to, he's a teenager, so it's, it's, it's even harder. They live in Fort Lauderdale. Um, they came to visit us um, for the parks in Orlando. Um, and he's, he actually was a camping supervisor um, where they was a pond and they had horses and stuff. And he finally did admit, and thank God for Sheila Black, calling back the ER doc and asking, was he ever in any, any fresh water? And it came out to be true. Um, and then there was questions of history of migraines. So the differential diagnosis got split a little bit. Okay, is this just migraines or is this um, uh, meningitis? Um, anyway, his vaccines were up to date. On uh, exam, he still, you know, he was actually ill appearing, very, um, but not toxic. He just complained a lot of the headache and, and um, neck pain, but he did have photophobia, and that was, you know, unusual. And so that's what started everyone, what's going on. Is this more typical than just a regular migraine? Or is there something else going on? Um, but so he got admitted. Um, we first had a brain MRI on, on the 17th, and it it actually showed a little bit concerning for meningitis. He had left anterior frontal cortical focal thinking, which is unusual. Um, and then the, this is after the fact, we repeated it, and the CT was also suspected, um, but it was still stable. So then Sheila Black calls and finds this in the CSF. Um, and thank God again to the summit, because Sheila just went into a role and uh, called and said, okay, I see an amoeba, this is not, you know. Um, that's why if, if it wasn't for me, for Sheila and um, Black, we would not be here today, to be honest, because she, she called Dennis, Dennis called me, who was the ER doctor, um, and sure enough, right then and there, we started the role. So he, throughout the hospital stay, um, he had different, uh, we do antibody testing um, that we like to send always to Jennifer, um, to the CDC in Atlanta. Um, initially, it was actually pretty low. So the, any uh, antibody titer um, greater than 1 to 64 is considered positive for Naglia Fowlery. And initially, he was, his was actually low, but the PCR that was sent to CDC came back positive. And the following um, repeats were actually getting higher and higher. Um, he's had the last test was on February of this year, and it's stable. It has not um, at all come back higher. It's been at 1 in 128, his antibody titers, and so it's been great. Um, so briefly, the timeline, he received seven different types of, of antibiotics or antiparasitic drugs for 28 days. Um, he was cooled. We put him in a coma. Um, he, overall, he lost about 20 to 25 pounds. Um, and uh, he was actually transferred to Joe DiMaggio's children for rehab on the 26th of August when we discharged him um, and, and um, down to Fort Lauderdale. 
his initial um, discharge labs. Um, so with all the drugs, despite all um, being in the hospital for about 28 days, he did develop acute kidney injury. Um, his creatinine went up really high, um, and he had some neural deficits as well um, that we were following. Um, so he developed acute kidney injury, hypertension, um, some weakness, a lot of weight loss, and he still had tingling to both hands and tremors, and that's why he needed inpatient rehab. Um, so, okay. so this is him uh, first um, during the rehab. Um, if we play the video, um, just to show how weak he was. Um, you know, we were all very proud of him, but he, he, was, he lost so much weight. Um, and this is him going up and down the stairs, which was really nice to see the fact that he was actually doing that. It took him um, about two weeks, two or three weeks of rehab. Um, this was at Joe DiMaggio's, and they did a great job on him. Um, we last saw him again after this in May. And here we are again. This was about a five pounds. Um, he couldn't even um, at, at all try to pull down. That's how weak he was, but um, he did really well. So um, in September, of, he came, visit a neurology. He still had some fatigue, uh, but no fevers. He's had no GI issues. He's had no respiratory problems. No hear, normal hearing, no swallowing, a lot of the side effects of the medication. He's pre pretty, pretty much off all medications um, as we speak. Um, and he, last time he was reporting some tingling in both in hands, and that's also pretty much resolved, which is amazing. Um, nephrology for the same. Um, because of the ki kidney injury we were following, um, he's had amazing urine output. His creatinine level was as high as five. And now it's down to 1.03, which is completely normal. He was also hypertensive, and he was on medication, Norvask, um, which is amlodipine, for um, a long time. And the last time he got the medication was February of this year. He's completely off all medications. And the last MRI, also done in February of this year, is, was completely internal resolution of all focal cortical thinking. Um, so it's completely normal MRI. This is him and the pictures in the rehab. Um, this was here in our last visit with Shelly and Steve um, in the office. And so anyway, and then this is him playing golf in the last in, the, in May. Um, but it's, it's, it's been amazing, and I really, really appreciate the summit. Um, he is now, like I said, celebrated two birthdays. But what better way of actually just, you know, having this case and have it presented by the case instead of having the actual patient come up to us today? So today we have Jordan, Sebastian, can you please join us upstage? <laughs> it's amazing. Um, so I know a lot of people have questions, I'm sure, but just to see him live here, it uh, always, always will make my, make my happier that I, what I do. I, I'm glad of what I do and everyone else who's helped me do it. But Sebastian, just quick questions. Um, how have you been? Uh, I've been good. I'm actually been great. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's uh, school going? School's okay. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's school, so. Like. I've, um, you know, I presented you. He's, uh, any symptoms or anything going on that you have still a little bit from after this case? No, just stress because of school. <laughs> it's pretty much it. So pretty much normal teenager stuff. <laughs> um, and is it true you're off all medications? Yeah, all of them. Um, he's, um, you know, now it's starting to apply for colleges and stuff, and so. He's, uh, that's mostly what's stressing him now compared to everything else that we had to deal with. But um, you know, he's um, now here with the family, um, Bernilda and, and dad. And um, he, uh, I just want to say in my, for us and for everyone who's helped um, for this case and any future case, I personally want to thank everybody because obviously it takes a team. And um, you know, like me calling the CDC or having Steve and, um, and Shelly here as well, it only helped me to be able to see this kid here today, this morning, so, but. Um, 
we, um, there is just one question. I'm sure everyone, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I don't have one. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm on the spot. <laughs> But um, I wish most of the other doctors that help wish they were here as well. But we also, um, through you, we, you know, we live and work every day. So thank you very much. No, thank you. I think we have a break now. We, we do have a break scheduled for right now. Um, let me check my time, see if we're running a little bit over. We um, we'll go ahead and take a break right now. Um, let's try and keep it maybe 10 minutes. And I don't know everyone. if you have any questions. Um, there will be some questions um, on the side, but if anybody has any questions, I don't mind asking or answering.